Good day. I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. It's Wednesday, March the 9th. We've got a quick update with CEO Ashish Malik of B Vectoring. B Vectoring develops plant protection products and systems for the agriculture industry. Today, B Vectoring announced positive results of its proprietary biological control agent, CR7, in the pre plant treatment of soybean seeds. Ashish, thanks for joining us. And please remember, this is neither a recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Ashish, why don't you give us a quick overview of the news? Yeah, thanks, Martin. It's great to be with you again. Uh, yeah, this is very exciting news for us. I mean, B-Vectoring Technologies, BBT is, as for short, you know, we have been selling in the, in the U.S. market for a couple of years. We're getting into the third season where we're selling our proprietary B dispenser systems to control different diseases on, on uh, flowering crops. Uh, what we did here with this project then resulted in some great data we got in 2021 was to look at the biological control agent that we've got, our proprietary CR7, Clonostachys rosea strain CR7, which is a biological fungicide. We, we, we studied the effect that it has on a major broad acre crop like soybeans, right? So this is a totally different scale of acreage around the world than, than the business that we're currently doing. Uh, and what we found is very positive results when CR7 is applied to the soybean seed as a seed coating before the seed is planted. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is a common practice in, um, in soybeans about, we estimate about 70 to 80% of the soybeans that are planted in the US get some form of a seed treatment. And what we found is that our CR7 was synergistic with some of the other products that are being used. And we got better plant establishment. We get better root systems, more biomass, which allows the soybean plant to kind of capture more resources that it needs to ultimately produce the crop, the bean. So very exciting results uh, from uh, three trials we did with very well-respected soybean researchers in the, in the U.S. Midwest. So when I was reading your news release, I was going, okay, how did the bees get into the soybean crops? And this has nothing to do with the bees. The it's bees, awesome. yeah. you use bees in other applications to deposit the CR7. Here you're getting rid, you're not dealing with bees, you're just applying the CR7 to the seeds themselves. You're, is it in a liquid or a powder that you sort of shake, mix it around with before you then plant it in the, before the farmers plant it in the, the soil? Yeah, I mean, th this, I mean, you're, you're right. Bees are not used for, for this particular application here. What we did was uh, we took seed from, so, so by the way, let me take a step back. The soybean seed industry. So who are the major players that actually produce the soybean uh, seeds themselves? I mean, you'll, you'll hear about, you know, Monsanto and Pioneer. Of course, Monsanto is now Bayer and DuPont Pioneer is now Corteva, but they're the ones that have, I don't know what it is, 70, 80% market share of the genetics of the seed itself, right? So you take a soybean seed and you apply the, the control agent and you kind of wrote, it's almost like a cement mixer. It's obviously a more sophisticated than that, but think about tumbling the seed with the control agent to apply it onto the seed. And you, you use certain agents to help it stick to the seed. And then that produces the coated seed that the farmer will then plant uh, into the soil. Uh, the, 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 the trials that we did was with our powder, our technical grade, which is a powder form. Uh, ultimately, as we would commercialize this, we would have to develop a liquid formulation, which is very doable. And, and the great thing here, Martin, is we could either do it ourselves or, or, or ultimately we're not, you know, we're not entrenched in the soybean broad acre business. So we're going to partner this technology with somebody who's got the know-how as well as the access to the, to the planted uh, acres. So ultimately that partner could also develop the, the, the liquid formulation. So that'll be part of the, the partnering discussion that we will have in due course. And when this will hopefully get ultimately applied to the seeds that the farmers plant in, into the ground, would the farmer sort of, oh, okay, for this crop, I'm going to add, like, have their own recipe of what they mix together? Or would it be like the, the seed companies themselves, they sell a sort of a pre-coded seed with your stuff on it? You're, you're, you're asking all the right questions. It's, 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 it's actually all of the above, right? Okay. There are different channels. There's a, there's a portion of the business that's upstream where the seed companies decide 
what product is coded on their seeds when they sell it. And then there's a portion that's controlled by the channel. And these would be distributors and retailers that they themselves decide what package to put on the soybean. And then there's a third piece where the farmer is almost doing it on site, right? There are many seed treaters that you can actually put on the farm where the farmer is really picking the package that he wants. So it is all, there are three distinct segments. And so conceivably, you could have three different partners, three, three different segments. All right. So these sound like very promising uh, results here. So what are the next steps in your development uh, of the product and getting it commercialized? So, so we, did, we did very early proof of concept work in 2020. So in 2021 was when we actually did our first year of uh, field trials. We have to repeat that. Right, so we have to repeat that, which we're doing this year. We're already, we're actually going to go from three to four locations this year. So we're going to go ahead, and and, and the seeds are going to get planted in May or April, May timeframe. So we're gearing up for that. Um, and then in parallel, we are going to be doing some studies around compatibility with seed uh, to show how stable the uh, the CR7 is once it is treated on the on the soybean seed, and that's important because. Remember what I said earlier about the different segments. If there's a seed company that's coding the seed themselves, there's probably several months that pass before the farmer actually plants it, right? So you want to make sure that the CR7 would be stable during that period of time. So those are very specific studies that you have to do as part of developing a soybean solution. So we're going to initiate those. And then ultimately, you know, we would have to develop, like I said earlier, a, a liquid formulation. So these are all steps. The first step is let's do a second year's worth of field studies. The other thing that we didn't really talk about in, um, in the press release that much is this was work that was done in the Northern Hemisphere, right here in the US. But there's probably more soybean acres that are planted in Brazil and Argentina. So there's a Southern Hemisphere component as well. So we've already talked to a couple of companies that are very, you know, an Argentinian company. We're trying to talk to one that's based in Brazil and maybe we'll try to replicate this work in a Southern Hemisphere trial, which would be our winter 2022, 2023, right? Okay, so one, another year of field trials and CR7 is does have EPA registration yes. for- yes. Does that carry over into soybeans or because it works on blueberries or like it, are you kind of good to go on this once you have commercial like acceptance of it? So there's two steps in getting a registration. One is your technical and then one is the actual um, directions for use, the use pattern, right? So we've got the technical registration. So we've already, you know, all the, all the safety studies and the environmental, you know, studies that we had to do will apply. So there's no work there. Of course, we would have to write an end use label specific to seed treatment and specific to soybeans. But that's lot, that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't take the full review cycle like getting a technical grade would. That's, I, I, I don't know, maybe that's a six, eight month process. It's not the 18 to 24 months like we had previously. Gotcha. So this year, so after this year's uh, second round of field trials, would you be in the position then to apply to the EPA with your use case scenario or? Yeah, you would probably want the liquid formulation because typically that is based on the formulation. Yeah. So the, the, the next steps for us would be, let's, you know, the second year's worth of trials, let's do the seed safety and compatibility studies. Let's then engage once again with partners. We already presented the 2021 results to about eight partners who are very interested and said, that's cool, you're doing all the right things. Let's sit down at the end of 22, review the results again. Uh, our, our, our hope is that one or more will express an interest. And at that point, you know, you've got hopefully a negotiation on we can choose which partner we want. And the liquid formulation development might actually be what a partner wants to do because they may want to have kind of their hands in this project a little bit. And that'll all be the back and forth. And at that point, we'll, we'll tackle the registration. Right? Gotcha. So it's, it's a little early to do that now, but yeah. that's probably a 2023 discussion. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we're well into 2022. So we're not, uh, things aren't that far uh, out in the future. Right. right. You, you mentioned eight partners that you've had discussions with. Can you elaborate on that um, some more? 
Yeah, for sure. So, so the partners, the ag chem partners that are participating in soybeans are a different level of uh, customers or potential partners than the ones that we talk to on the bee vectoring side. Uh, and these are the majors, right? So if you think about worldwide, uh, it used to be the big six, now they're a big four. And the, you know, companies like Bayer Crop Science, which is now Monsanto and Bayer's one, uh, Syngenta, BSF, Corteva, which is DuPont and Dow, and UPL and, and FMC. There's a whole, that there, these are the multi-billion dollar global multinationals. Those are the kinds of companies that are interested in developments in soybeans. So we're, we're talking to that group. Uh, we talked to eight of them. There was a major seed treatment um, conference in December last year. Uh, one of them is doing their own independent studies, which is great, right? So we do our work, but then one of them is already doing their own. So and, sorry, just on that, you're then supplying them some CR7 yeah. and they're going to run their own crop studies yeah, and exactly. for, see for themselves how it works. Yes. And, and you know, we are... And, and these these larger companies, uh, they do things at a different scale than, than we do, right? And we do yeah. three to four trials on our fairly limited resources. They'll do 30, 40, 50 trials, right? So they do things just to get more statistically relevant data. So it's very exciting that we have at least one partner that's looking at this. And, and we hope as we progress at the end of 2022 into 2023, that there'll be others. And, and, and I think that this is kind of an inflection point for the company because this now means we are you know, part of the conversation uh, for the row, row crops, the broad acre crops, which is the bread and butter for these global multinationals. So the partnership opportunities are now kind of increased for us, which is, which is very exciting. That is, because I, I always viewed you, you, you guys as providing a bit of a niche crop with uh, blueberries and stuff, not some of the big commodity, global commodities and soybeans is obviously one of them. Is there any opportunity in any of the other big ones like wheat or uh, corn or anything like that for seed I, or any other potential? I think there are, right? I mean, I, th I think there, there certainly are. Uh, we would have to do some trials. So I think as we move forward, We'll, we will look at cotton, corn, cereals, maybe even rice, you know, canola. I think these are all the big broad acre crops where, uh, you know, we believe there is an opportunity, but we have to prove it just like we did in soybeans. So yeah. we'll get around to them. Uh, we want to get the momentum going on this project first, uh, and then we can hopefully layer on other crops as well where we look at it. You know, the nice thing about soybeans is um, a fair amount of biologicals are already used in soybeans uh, because there's a class of bacteria that are used to help the soybean plant fix nitrogen from the air, right? And nitrogen is a source of nutrition for the plant. Yeah. So these inoculants are biological bacteria. So there's already kind of a precedent. And what we showed is that our CR7 is actually synergistic with those inoculants that they're using. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's probably an easier entry into that crop versus maybe some of the other crops. But, but we believe that there's an opportunity there also. All right. Well, that's great. Yep. Ashish, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to uh, explain this and uh, have a great day. And we'll talk to you again soon. Great. My pleasure. Thanks, Martin.